amazing artist. I am super excited to have Sheherazad here. She's a really good friend of mine. She's one of my idols. She's an amazing teacher. And actually, the first project that Kelly and I did as Creative Hips was actually to host her. So uh, it's even, it's really special for us to have her and start a new project with her. Uh, I know that many of you guys know Sheherazad. Sheherazad is an amazing dancer. Uh, she has several DVDs. She has lived in Cairo for about how many years already? About four and a half years now. Four and a half years. Exactly. So I even it's remember when you were thinking about making that transition. I know yeah. that it's a very hard decision for you to make. Hi, Natalie. Uh, so I was kind of happy that I, I saw everything and now you are doing so well and we are learning so much also from your time staying there. Okay. So I'm going to start. There's some fans of you. Everybody's writing beautiful comments. Thank you so much, everybody, for the support. We have 47 people watching us. Okay. So, Sherazad, we love your music. We use it all the time in the studio. So I wanted to take the time also to thank you for that. You're uh, very well. Yeah, because we use it all the time. Kelly has used some of the challenges that you were also posted online. So we always stay connected with you. So the first question that I wanted to ask you was basically what was your lifestyle before the pandemia and this global craziness started? How many shows were you living in, were you doing in Cairo? What was your lifestyle in Cairo before this? So before this, um, I generally tour and teach. I split my time between the touring and teaching and between full-time shows in Cairo. Although this year, I really only had one workshop so far. I was spending a lot of time in January and February just doing my like weekly shows um, and focusing on some study and some music projects that I'm doing there. Um, so right before I left, I was working pretty hard with my band. Um, I started a new contract last year with a new place. So it's like minimum one show a night with my band. But in the past few months, it had gotten really busy. Up until a few weeks ago, it was two or three shows a night kind of minimum with random kind of days quieter and days off, but really pretty much every night. It was pretty intense. I was working really hard on studying Arabic this year um, because I really want to use my time in Egypt to become fluent so I can do more of my own personal study as a part of that. And um, I wanted to kind of push myself to the next level. So even just like three weeks ago, it was amazing. All of a sudden, stuff just started slowing down. All of a sudden, there were no guests in the nightclubs. And then we started to get more of the news of like, kind of coronavirus spreading to more places. So less people were traveling. So obviously, that's a big thing that affects Egypt, because they, you know, the nightlife scene there, a lot of it revolves around Egyptians, but a lot of it also revolves around the guests that are coming in from other countries, be it like, Europe and China and America, but also within the Middle East, like mm -hmm. the Saudi Arabian people that come to vacation in Egypt and the other North African and Middle Eastern people. So um, it was just interesting all of a sudden to see things just start shutting down, you know? Did it happen slowly or? It was, I feel like it happened pretty fast and it was a really crazy week about two or three weeks ago. Because first, all the nightclubs were empty. And then we had a freak thunderstorm. And everything was flooded and everyone's power was out. So, like, that also knocked out light nightlife for, like, two or three nights by itself. And then after the storm is when all of the travel bans started happening. Oh. So, it was, like, this week of just, like, chaos. Madness. Madness. Yeah. <laughs> and Life for the people chaos. that are not uh, familiar with the shows in Cairo. You're, you're, you're telling me that you were doing 
about three shows per night. How long are the shows? Um, the shows, there's a huge range in how long shows are, and that has a lot to do with what venues you're dancing in. Okay. Um, but the general venues I dance, it's usually live shows with my band, and they can last from a half an hour to an hour yeah for show okay yeah so it's now that you have explained to us this craziness <laughs> i want to go back to where are you right now and knowing that you went through this abrupt change i wanted to ask you how does your body feels with the change and do you feel like this time of solitude and quietness is going to have an impact in the way you move? Mm -hmm. It's a really good question. And I'm sure that this is something that's going to change for everybody, even non-dancers right now, is just a total change in daily schedule. Because like mm -hmm. I said, I'm used to doing like a few hours of dance pretty much every day. And then along with that, I usually go to the gym too, or go do physical therapy exercises or Pilates or something that kind of maintains my body to be able to dance as much as I do. Um, so in some ways it's daunting because I lack this regular daily schedule, but in other ways um, it's actually a positive change because I do work my body really hard And anyone who dances for a living will agree that like you only have so much energy and time in the day to do all of the physical things that you would like to do. Mm -hmm. So at least I can look on the positive side and kind of think about the good ways that this can benefit my body. I can get a real long rest, which I so rarely get. And I can focus more of my time and energy now that I have extra time on physical therapy exercises, taking care of my body, focusing on things that I don't usually have the energy mm -hmm. to focus on in my daily life. So I do think that I'm probably going to lose a lot of endurance because that's the biggest thing I find when I'm not dancing every day is not so much lack of strength, it's the endurance to be able to dance for that long at mm -hmm. a time. But I think I will be able to improve on a lot of muscular things and technical things in my body that I just don't have time to focus on otherwise. That's amazing. Uh, do you feel more creative now? And how do you practice creativity as a skill? That was a question that somebody dropped in our inbox. Yeah, we were both like, what? <laughs> Um, so for the first part, um, I don't know if it's feeling more creative, but it's just a total change because I get a lot of inspiration from what I do every day. Um, and I usually have to be very active and creative, like in the moment with the things I'm like literally working on in that time, like the shows and the workshops I have to pre prep for. But in this time, it's really nice. And I guess you could tie this into the like practicing creativity. I don't think creativity is necessarily a skill you can work on, but I do think that you can cultivate it. Mm -hmm. And part of that has to do with grabbing the opportunity to take advantage of creativity when you can. So even when I'm really, really busy, I might see something or I might hear a song that starts to inspire me and I might not have the time to really to focus on it at the minute. Exactly. So I keep a big folder in my computer with music and videos and notes, just all of this random stuff that I jot down that I don't really have time for, but now I can come back to. So I found That's a good that idea. now... Yeah. Now I have time to kind of dive into those archives um, to look for new inspiration that I didn't really have time to explore before. And one thing 
um, that I'm doing related to that is that right before I left, I had started working on some new music with my band because I always anticipate leading up to Ramadan and during Ramadan, there is not a lot of work mm -hmm. for, for dancers. And that means if you work with a band, your band doesn't have a lot of work either. So I try to plan this time every year to kind of work on a CD so they have that steady income even when we're not doing shows. So I've been spending a lot of time going back over music for new ideas. That's, I like the file situation. <laughs> yeah, because inspiration isn't, for me personally, it's not something I can force. It's something that just all of a sudden pops up and I need yeah. to grab it before it goes away, even yes. if I don't have time to do anything with it. Just like you said, an opportunity. Yeah. But that you gotta really be helps. like ready to receive it also. Yeah. So. Okay. So this is a question from my partner, Kelly, that I love it. Okay. So Kelly asks, this could be a very discouraging time since performers are unsure of when their next show will be. What advice can you give to help them use this time to create a piece with the uncertainty of when it will be showcased? Kelly's mm -hmm. here, she's watching. Kelly! <laughs> um, that somewhat relates back to my other um, comment about creativity. I think uh, the more that we dance, um, the more we tend to fall into a kind of routine with ourselves. Um, and I can definitely say as a performer and a teacher, I definitely get asked to do generally similar things that people like for most of the workshops and most of the shows like the things I'm popular for get requested more. So that's usually what I end up focusing on. And when I'm mostly working, I don't really have the extra time to build up my skills in other areas or just areas that I'm personally interested in. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important that we accept and appreciate the extra time that we're given now, as well as the huge amount of resources we have online. All of these teachers are getting online now and have all of this availability. And not only that, just like you can get lost in all of the articles and all of the videos and all of the information that's just right there online. So it's a perfect time to dive into a new piece or a new style that you haven't had time to explore before that does take a little more research. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something I'm, I'm thinking about doing right now. There's a couple pieces that have been in my mind, but they require more background information and research. So I haven't really had time to do them yet. Mm -hmm. It's also something that has to do with self-discipline, I think. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which I think many people are struggling right now with feeling very anxious. And anxiety, I think it's probably the worst one, but I think that if we put a little bit of effort on paying attention to our dreams or projects, uh, we yeah. will definitely feel better, I mean. And you, and you know, like, it's a big shift for me um, and a lot of dancers because I think so much of our experience in dance is about connecting and about the community that's around you But sometimes, especially if you're a working dancer, that can take you farther away from your personal needs and your personal goals. So it's also a great opportunity to kind of ground. And I've just been like putting on music and just like free dancing. And it's a total shift for me because most of my time is spent dancing in front of people and the vibe is so completely different. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to take that time to get back to dancing to you? for yourself, mm -hmm. which also really honestly makes me feel better. It de-stresses me because I don't have to worry about anyone watching me. I can just relax and use the music as a time to just kind of turn my brain off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. I think Natalie from New York is going to drop a, a question about self-discipline. I'm gonna give her a few minutes. Okay. 
So uh, the next question is very similar. This was a question that Tina, one of our students from Creative Hits and from Belly to Apps too, uh, she says, not everyone who dances or engages on other creative pursuits is a professional. Many of us have, a, have to balance life and work even on the quarantine time. And it can be very hard to find time to do things that aren't work or life related. So she mm -hmm. asked Scheherazade, what words of wisdom or inspiration can you offer for people who struggle to prioritize creative time in their life? Mm -hmm. It's a really good question. And even as a working dancer, I can say that it's hard to find a balance, as I said before, of like doing things for me to still enjoy this on a personal level and mm -hmm. still keep up my work schedule. Mm -hmm. um, for everybody, it's going to be different. But for me, the thing that helps me the most to stay on track, especially these days, is actually making a set schedule. So if that means a few days a week, scheduling a class, if it means every day, scheduling a set amount of time, even if it's only 10 minutes or 20 minutes, just to shut off your phone, shut off the computer and just move to music. Mm -hmm. I think this is the best way you can start. And it's a really good idea, like I said, to set that time, even if it's a tiny amount of time, to disconnect so that you can let your mind be open to just fully focusing within the dance. Yeah, I feel this is a moment where people can get very addicted to social media. Yeah. <laughs> And the fact that they don't have a structure to follow But I think it's very important to also have those commitments with yourself, like you just said. Keep the phone away. Do whatever you need to really be in your zone. Yeah. Um, so I do think, I, I think that's something uh, very important I'm that we all have to do. I'm every day to just disconnect. And that has been so helpful in managing my stress and anxiety levels the past few weeks, mm -hmm. like chronically. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have a very simple and I want to say cosmopolitan uh, magazine question. What do you miss the most <laughs> now in the quarantine, which I think you already answered, and what do you like the most about this quarantine time? Mm -hmm. um, I miss the most, you know, I, I don't, dancing isn't a financially motivated thing for me. Like I'm a full-time dancer because I really do love what I do. And, you know, I miss my friends and my, my team that I work with in Egypt because you end up spending hours of your day every day with these like musicians and people at the same clubs you see every day you build up these friendships and you just get used to seeing people and creating live art with people mm -hmm. every day like it's a really special connection and I think it's especially unique in this world where we are so connected online it's so nice to just have those in-person consistent experiences every day. So that's something I definitely miss. Um, I really love performing and working with the band and just having fun every day with the guests. I definitely miss that. Um, but I am very thankful for this time. I, uh, I decided right when I, what, right when I kind of realized that there was going to be like a lot of rounded air travel, Mm -hmm. I decided to go ahead and fly to the States because I figured if I'm not going to be working and doing shows for at least a month or two, that I should take advantage of this time and spend more time with my family. And, and you did it just on time. I did. I literally flew on like the last day. It was so stressful, you guys. I was worried. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, 
did she make it? Like, where is she? Is she in the airport? In what airport? Yeah, all my is? friends. I was freaking there. out for you, yeah. girl. Because I had to, I had to decide like this. Because yeah. in like two or three days, it went from like things are probably gonna be fine. Oh, maybe I'll travel after a week to like you need to do it today. Because yeah, everything's closed. Packed everything. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like my my house is there my cats are there like luckily we have really good friends that will I come in and just, like mm -hmm. stay at our house and watch everything when we're gone but like i just had to guesstimate how much shit i needed and mm -hmm. throw it in a suitcase and just like uh yeah so natalie tough, from but... new york just dropped her question and she asked how do you keep yourself inspired to do your personal training even if you don't feel in the mood to do it. And how do you keep the discipline? I keep the discipline because uh, I need to for my job. Like, girl, I work full time as a performer. If I don't keep in a tired, very competitive have my atmosphere, job. <laughs> too. Yeah. Yeah. And not just that, but like, I have some issues in my back. I have some issues in my knee joints and moving constantly actually helps me to be able to live pain free. Mm -hmm. And that might sound strange, but like the more sed sedentary I am, the more I just sit around all day, I get more pain in my back and I start me having too. more joint issues. Right? <laughs> me too. Yeah. So it's I'm, like I'm used to perform Friday. only Friday and Saturday, but I noticed that every Sunday my entire body hurts. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like yesterday a weird pain. Yesterday I did a lecture and I was just sitting for like two and a half hours, and I cannot tell you, my back hurts so much after. So I have to be in constant movement, and I have to do a lot of abdominal work to support, like the issues that I have in my back or else I'm in pain. So that's a big motivator for me, not just like keeping my body in shape for the level of work that I have to maintain. Like all the technique that I like to do is very muscle driven. And if I don't have those muscles, then it just doesn't work the same. But like the pain is a motivating factor for me, sure. I see a couple of dancers feeling very related to that comment. <laughs> We all got our issues, man. <laughs> if we don't dance, our bodies are not happy at all. And they make sure to let us know. <laughs> yeah. And my brain, too. Like, I just, I'm somebody that needs to be doing something all the time. And dance allows me to do that in every direction. Because I can study stuff. I can move all the time. Like, I can nerd out about my technique and be like fixing th like I can do things in every direction because if I have nothing to do I'm just like Phew. yeah your brain doesn't work the same I want to uh, go back to the conversation that we had prior to this where we were talking or I was commenting you that I was very blessed that I had you know my good time where I tour a lot and now I have always been I have always put a lot of uh, effort on my online presence. So when these things happen, it was kind of like good that I have already done all this work. And I think you have worked very hard since I know you on your online presence. Uh, and I wanted it for you to share that advice that you were telling me on how you cannot put all your efforts on one thing. You know, the fact that you are working with a professional dancer, your income is going to be more difficult. So everything is going to be a risk, right? Yeah. So you got to, I, I want you to share a little bit of, uh, of your input because I know that you have worked, you work in Cairo, you have also had DVDs, so you have worked in different uh, aspects, your career. Yeah. And I think it's an important moment for everybody to kind of like also understand what are the steps that they're taking in their dance when they're trying to be professional. Yeah. 
for dancers who really want to make a career dancing, it is so important to realize that it's a bad idea to kind of put all of your focus into one specific aspect of the dance, because really this is an industry that seems like it's kind of a niche, but it has all of these offshoots that you can go explore and that you can make business in. And mm -hmm. especially these days, it becomes so apparent that like, the more you diversify what you can do, what your offerings are, the more stable you can be because no matter what, this is going to be a really unstable job. And that's part of the risk factor mm -hmm. in taking on a job like this. But the more you can diversify, the better. And a huge part of that is focusing a lot of time and effort on training. Like, I think there are more easy ways to kind of jump into doing one thing, but I've always taken kind of a slow, methodical approach. I always joke that I always take the hard way in like everything mm -hmm. I do, because if I do something, I wanna do it the best way that I can with the most background knowledge I can so that what I'm putting out there is really, really a quality, product because at the end of the day that's going to be the most important so for that reason I did things like um, do a super serious Pilates teacher training to make sure I had a backup even before I, I remember I think you did that before moving to Egypt right yes I did um, but yeah just thinking about different ways that you can do different things that still relate to your work but make you more diverse and more versatile as a performer or as a teacher. It becomes so valuable in times like this because any of these businesses we have, it could stop with like that. It could stop instantly. We just don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. What are you working on now? <laughs> well, I have, spent the past week and a half now that I made it to the States. <laughs> I've spent the past week and a half um, getting my online stuff all figured out so that I can do online classes and workshops for the next few months. So I'm making kind of a weekly schedule of live classes and then I'm putting together some super nerdy pre-recorded classes Because me personally, I'm like, you've got all this time to sit around. Like, we should go down YouTube holes and nerd out about all of this stuff. So I designed um, a four-week musicality course that's half video, but also half of me just put together a super nerdy resource sheet of all of these things that you can go watch to kind of, like, continue learning about stuff. Because we so got to take advantage of the time and all the resources we have online. But I also realize sometimes um, some stuff is hard to find. So I'm just like, now I can read and write Arabic. This makes it very easy for me to like search out specific things that you might not be able to grab if you mm -hmm. don't. So yeah, I'm getting so nerdy <laughs> with this stuff. <laughs> so how can they find your information, your Instagram, your page, you're uploading everything in your web page. What's the best way to keep us updated of what you're doing? I will keep posting regular updates on my Instagram and on my Facebook. And I'm also, I just started a new YouTube channel at the beginning of this year mm -hmm. called Shehrzad Studios, which is more focused towards educational videos. So I'm trying to make a balance because I know that not everybody, like a lot of people are in bad financial situations because of all of this and can't necessarily afford to do classes. So I'm trying to also post like fun little drills and little educational. Oh, I saw videos. one today, the shimmy one. Yeah. And I've been collecting a lot of footage in Egypt from like band practices and with musicians I know to put up like little informational videos. So I'm trying to continue that stuff as well. And as far as YouTube nerd outs go, I'm making like long playlists of like different musical styles and cool documentaries and 
just stuff. It's just like my nerdy dream page that I decided to do. And then um, the classes are available for registration on my website, shaharazadrocks.com. Perfect. Well, I'm super thankful that you spend this time with us. I have a request uh, for you, by the way. I have a request. Yes. Uh, I was talking to some girls last night, but I also, we want you to do a dancing in heels class. Oh my God. Please. It's okay. I'll do it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I recommended that to me. I love when you write to me. I, I love to see you dancing on heels. <laughs> I'll it's do it. I'll do me. it. Everyone says that. People like the heels. Okay, please, I'll do look, something. Everyone's saying, please, come on. I am. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, we, we need to get on those heels. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I, the fact that I dance here basically every week and, and you know, I'm only 5'1", so I have to do it in order for people to realize I'm there. You know, because yeah. I'm so tiny, you know, and the hair is big, but it's, you know, it's still not the same. <laughs> so I want to announce to everybody, I, Creative Hips is partnering with Cherasat. We're going to start a giveaway challenge that we're going to announce on April 1st. Cherasat is going to give away her series. Creative Hips is going to give away two months of classes and also Menat Dance Geek uh, is gonna offer the two lectures that we did with Angelica for the Menat Dance Geek, your lecture and my lecture. Okay, nice. so we're gonna announce on April 1st, so make sure you stay tuned because there's a lot of really nice gifts. And me personally, I want everybody to stay creative. I think that's the best antidote for all this situation um and wow i'm very excited i have a lot to think about after this interview um and i learned a lot with you i love that we have kept connected all this time i wish we got to hang out more but maybe now we can hang out online i feel like i'm gonna on be zoom with my friends online than i usually yeah. in person and we will bring Scheherazade to Miami. It will happen. We were already talking about it. We just need to put a date, okay? I just need to know what is gonna happen in the next six months. <laughs> so we can plan it, but we will make it happen. We will make it happen. Scheherazade is gonna come with us. Uh, I'm dying to take classes with her personally. I'm dying to spend time with her. So stay tuned. Okay. She, uh, Kelly say, thank you, Sheresa, for taking the time to do this for us. Love Lorena, you, I know that she's a huge fan of her. Kayla, okay, all the girls here. Your squeezy entertainment, Vanessa, my colleagues. Okay. So who wants to know who's coming next Monday with me? I can't wait to see who it is. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> you gotta wait for the flyer. <laughs> so thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Make sure you follow Cherasad, follow Creative Hips. Thank you for Cherasad. I hope everybody felt inspired. Stay creative. I love you guys all. Bye. Thank you. Don't touch your face. <laughs> Bye, everybody.